Well, one thing I've been working on lately, I've been uh, in sort of involved uh, in the not-for-profit world uh, on two fronts. One is uh, I've been working um, with um, Bono, old friend, and he has got me involved in terms of helping him uh, reorganize and uh, um, move forward with this sort of little ecosystem he's developed, along with the Gates Foundation and George Soros and uh, Warren Buffett and people like that, which is really about raising awareness, raising money, and allocating money in a smart way against the extreme poor. And, and in his case, it's in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. So he's got Data, which is a lobbying, an activist, it's a, it's a uh, basically a lobbying and policy shop. There's one which is a <coughs> consumer activist organization, and there's this thing called Red, Product Red. You might have seen the, the windows in the gap, which basically tries to tap into the consumer spending power that goes on, where a certain portion of profits get sent directly to the global fund and get allocated for, in this case, antiretroviral drugs for people with HIV and AIDS. So I've been helping them find people to run these um, companies and reorganize the way that they're currently set up so they can sort of take themselves to a, a, a different level of effectiveness. And I, and I would just say as a plug for them, they've accomplished so much. It's, it's, it's really quite an impressive story to date, and a lot of smart, dedicated people have been working on this problem now very actively since the last six or seven years. I'm also uh, have been I've returned uh, recently a couple of times to Afghanistan, which is a place I lived in for many years in the '70s, and I've been involved there with uh, both some specific uh, reconstruction efforts and uh, talking to various people there about what that country needs and how I might be able to help in terms of making the kind of connections as they almost start over again after 30 years of war. So those have been, uh, you know, two things that have been somewhat gratifying to me and, and quite different from what I did in my prior career. I feel good. I mean, look, I was on a very fast-paced job, not only MTV, MTV Networks, but then as, you know, C, Chief Operating Officer, Chief Executive Officer of Viacom, running a public company. Very big responsibility, uh, a lot of things about that life that are enjoyable, but at the same time, I do find that after 26 years, it's like, you know, that was a long time to do anything, a quarter of a century. So, and I had a life before, I had a career in life before I even started in that business. So I've always been a fan, I've always said, you know, you should do several different things in your life, have a bunch of different chapters or parts. And sometimes maybe you just need to be kicked into the next part or, you, you know, just for sake of comfort or repetition, you end up doing the same thing maybe longer than you should. So I, I'm exhilarated now. It's been, been an adjustment period, but I, but I feel every day when I get up, I'm going to do things that I'm really, uh, you know, passionate about or care about. And there's a portfolio of things that, uh, that I, isn't as someone saying, well, you have this job, so this is a bunch of problems you have to deal with. Uh, I'm, I'm not so much in that defensive mode at the moment, which is the case for most people who, say if you're a CEO of a public company, a lot of it you're playing defense. You're dealing with problems or crises. At the moment, in the smaller life I have for myself, I've got a lot less of that, which is a good thing.